Hi, my name is Hila. So I graduated Chinese, graduated Chinese medicine uh, in 98 and then decided to find a place to do some uh, practical, to get some practical experience. Uh, back then in Israel, it wasn't very much organized, so I took myself to Taipei in Taiwan, and I found a wonderful clinic there, the Yusheng Clinic. Um, and, um, well, the first thing that happened was he didn't believe I ever, ever studied Chinese medicine in my life. He said, you absolutely have no knowledge of anything, um, which was a bit insulting, but um, um, the second thing that happened, and this was the real game changer, this doctor had uh, uh, rounds at a hospital nearby his clinic. His clinic was private, but he would go to this hospital and anybody in the hospital could ask to be treated by him as well. This was a conventional, uh, modern hospital. Um, and in one of those rounds, uh, we saw a man being wheeled into operation. His leg was about to be amputated due to uh, diabetic uh, gangrene. Um, and he stopped them right on the way to the operation room and he said, can you give me three days, fill him up with antibiotics, I want to try and save this man's leg. Um, and they agreed and the patient of course agreed. And during those three days he gave him immense amount of Guajitang. Now, I knew Guajitang was a formula for external pathogen. I could not for the life of me understand what was going on. But every day we came to see this man and already on the second day we could see the color coming back to his foot. Uh, and by the third day, of course, the foot had been saved. Otherwise, this wouldn't have been a game changer. Um, and I went back to the Shang Han Lun and I read everything I could find on Guizhitang and I googled Guizhitang and I read every article I could find and I find nothing there that could in any way indicate using Guizhitang for diabetes, for gangrene, uh, for blood stagnation, nothing. Um, and then I went and I asked him about it and I told him, listen, I couldn't find the symptoms uh, to indicate that this was the right formula for the patient. And the answer that I got was, stop bothering so much about the symptoms, which was incredibly confusing because what should I bother about if not the symptoms? Um, and this was basically the first step towards um, many, many years, which are still continuing, in understanding that symptoms are not to be taken literally. Symptoms demonstrate to us something else that is happening in the body, the dynamics of the body, and this is basically the teachings of the Shang Han Lun. And what I want to do today in the talk is try and explain the difference between dynamics and a symptom, and when is a symptom a demonstration of a dynamics, and when is a symptom simply a symptom and should be taken as one. So uh, the model, first let's explain what the six systems of the Shang Han Lun are. Uh, it begins in the Neijing and the Suwen uh, that outlines us a very, very simple fact. The qi of both yin and yang may be present in large or small quantities. Hence, one speaks of three yin and three yang and later goes on to detail the three yang systems and the three yin systems, which we will talk about in detail in a minute. Uh, basically, uh, uh, this wasn't very clinical, what was written in the Neijin. It was a beginning, it was a model, but this was very, very much expanded in the Shang Han Lun. The Shang Han Lun was written uh, by Zhang Zhongjing somewhere in the second century, um, and it is a physiological model. It is not uh, like I was taught the story of a pathogen making its way through the body from the external into the internal and what happens to it on its journey. This is a physiological si system that teaches us how to diagnose diseases and how to treat diseases. Um, and um, as a physiological system, each of the six systems I have no better word but system for the Tai Yang, Tai Yin. Um, so this is what we're going to be using because they're not meridians. They're not, uh, uh, can't be calling them that. Um, each one is present in each and every physiological process that our body does. So it's like a puzzle with six pieces and when one piece is missing or when one piece is not functioning, there are going to be very, very specific characteristics of this missing piece. Each piece has a characteristic in health 
And as a result, it's going to have a very, very characteristic pathological clinic. Um, and the Shang Hanlun is trying to teach us this uh, clinic so that we recognize which system is now diseased, how do we treat the pathology, no matter what the symptom is. The symptom is not important, it's the dynamics of it that will lead us to the proper system. So um, how do we uh, figure out wh how these, what characterizes each system? So first of all, um, it's important to understand that the Shang Han Lun doesn't make life easy for us. It doesn't start with a chapter, Ta Yang. This is how Ta Yang behaves in health. This is what you would expect from it uh, in disease. Um, and uh, one of the things that the same doctor, Dr. Lee in the Taipei Clinic told me was, uh, after you read the Shang Han Lun from start to end six times, you can come and ask me questions. Because it, it, it's not one chapter after another. It's, it's a, a whole network where one line will come together with another line and you don't get it the first time you read through. And the second time you miss most of the things as well. And I cheated because he wouldn't teach me. You know, he gave me little clues and hints, but then I went out and find people who would teach me. So I'm helping you cheat as well. I have never read that book from beginning to end six times. I may be up to four, uh, but uh, one day, one day I'll reach six. Um, I've been told in China that um, if you want to go to a real Shang Han Lunist like Dr. Li and study, then you have to know the Shang Han Lun by heart. You have to be able to just stand and uh, yeah, um, so um, I would never pass that test. Um, so uh, through the Shang Han Lun, we have clues that lead us to the understanding of each and every system. And uh, we're going to go through four very, very specific clues that the text gives us. First of all, the name of each system. There is a lot in a name, a lot. Uh, even in the name of the book itself, Shang Han Lun. Shang is uh, injury uh, or harm and Han is cold. And this does not mean uh, harm of cold pathogen. How is it translated in English? Uh, cold pathogenic diseases, something like that. No, not, not the meaning of the book. Um, Han actually in Chinese has two meanings. One meaning is cold in a very narrow sense, but in a much broader sense, which is often used in Chinese ancient medical text, it's a general word for a pathogenic factor affecting the body. It could be heat, it could be stagnation, it could be phlegm. Any pathogenic influence on the body is Han. That is one meaning of the word Han. So in that sense, it would mean a pathogenic influence harming the body, or a theory of a pathogenic influence. But it has a double meaning. There's another side to this coin, because Han is also what happens when we are deficient of Yang. Yang gives us warmth. Yang gives us motion. Cold is also something that slows motion, something that also physically makes us cold. And when we are deficient of Yang, we are actually being harmed by cold. So what we see in the three Yang systems are harm caused by pathogens, and in the three yin systems, we are seeing harm caused by deficient yang. So just in that one name, we see two sides of pathologies that we are going to be looking for. We see that, uh, uh, that uh, a struggle between the zheng qi, the, the true and right qi of the body, and the xie qi, the evil qi. It's just in those, it's actually in that one word, han. Uh, that we see what this book is all about. So we're going to go through the names of each systems and we're going to see what each of these names tells us. The time frame of the system. Each system has one line stating a time frame in which this system is at its best. What it really says is that this is the time that a disease in the system will resolve, meaning this is when it's going to be the strongest. And this time frame could be taken literally as to expect that when we have a Ta Yang disease, it's going to resolve between 9 in the morning at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But if we study the book, we see that nothing should be taken literally in this book. It does not mean we have to wait for those hours for a disease to resolve. It shows us the characteristic of the system, and I will show you how in a minute. The third thing 
is the general outline of a pathology. Every system has at least one line, it's usually one line, maximum two lines, that give us a general idea of what a pathology will look like in the system. It will later go on to give us different manifestations of the same pathology. But basically there is one outline that teaches us the characteristics of pathology in the system. And that, of course, will also teach us what kind of system it is in health, what dynamics this system enables in the body. And the last one is the characteristic herbs used in the treatment. It's actually the characteristic formulas used in the treatments, but in an hour and a half, there is no chance I will ever be able to go through one formula. So what I have done is I have chosen for each system one herb uh, that demonstrates the characteristics of this or the, the dynamics of this system. Now, this is really reverse engineering here because often he will give us a, 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 a pathological situation which with almost zero symptoms, nothing to grab onto, but he will tell us what formula to use. So we start from the herbs and from the formula and we go back and we start to try to explain ourselves to ourselves using our knowledge of the dynamics of the system, what he meant here. So very often this is how the book is understood by just the herbs he is given. So knowing the herbs of the Shang Khan Lun is very important, um, but there aren't that many. Much, much, much fewer than the ones that you all have probably had to be tested on.